Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. It's kind of exciting today because I'm driving the Ford Bronco, the new Ford Bronco. But also this one is the uh, Wow Track version, which is the heavy duty, truly off-road capable version of the Ford Bronco. So what I'm going to do today is to do a walk around review with you, which means that you're going to basically uh, walk around the whole vehicle with me as I show you everything to do with the Bronco from the exterior to the interior, then my driving uh, capability as well. And also I will do my usual engineer's audit and check for the paint quality and also the body panel fit and alignment. Let's get right into it. Welcome back. So first I'm going to do my usual engineer's audit and check for the quality of this Ford Bronco. I know that some of you guys might be concerned with whether or not Ford makes uh, a great quality cars, but I'm going to show you that this Bronco is extremely well built and even surprised me. So for example, in terms of panel fit, if I were to measure some of these uh, gaps, it's about um, four millimeter between the hood and the front fender. And between the front fender and the rear door, uh, a little bit more, about 4.7 millimeter. Uh, and then between the front door and the rear fender, it's even better, about 4.3 millimeters. But the most important thing is that um, the fit and alignment of the panel is surprisingly good. There's no uh, unusual flatness or um, out of alignment panels. Uh, everything seems to line up. Even these edges, which is also very difficult to get it right, looks good. So the actual panel fit is surprisingly good in this Ford Bronco. Now this is aluminum, 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 and this is steel. You can tell by the sound of the panel, aluminum sound, steel sound. So let's take a look at the paint now, and I'm going to measure the paint thickness with a paint thickness gauge. Now this is an indication of the total thickness of the paint, not necessarily the quality of the paint itself, but typically speaking, especially for something like this, thicker the better because you want uh, enough paint and clear coat on it so that if you're going off-roading and it gets scratched up you don't dig right into the metal so let's take a look and see how the paint thickness might be so this is 119 micron now most paint thickness is between 100 to 180 microns so 120 is about the right amount of thickness uh, because that's pretty well average for all vehicles let's take a look at the front fenders 138 so a little bit thicker here and 130 in the door here and 120. So actually that's pretty good. It's a little bit thicker than what I will find in typical Toyotas, which are about 110, 115. So it's good to have a bit thicker paint, again, because uh, if you're going off-roading and you happen to drive through some forest, you want to make sure that uh, the paint is thick enough to withstand some of those uh, situations. So what about the actual paint quality? Well, this one is a very interesting cyber orange paint. Uh, it's not really the paint uh, for me, but it looks really great with this Ford Bronco Wild Track. And it's a, a really bright uh, metallic orange color. And I've been looking at it for a little while now to see if I can find some paint defects. So if I were to look at the paint from front to back, it's very consistent and actually the, the uniformity is excellent. Uh, and orange peel is at a minimum. So overall, it's really good paint job. Uh, better than expected because I kept thinking that uh, with the Ford Bronco they might be a little bit uh, rough with the paint but no this paint job is as good as what I've seen in most Japanese cars maybe Toyota might be a little bit better but not by much so overall the quality I give it at least a B to B plus in terms of the paint panel fit and alignment uh, and everything looks good now let's take a look at the um, inside and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the car and also we're going to do a quick quality check as well so now we're inside the Ford Bronco Wild Track and it's cool, cool design inside. But before I go too far, let me tell you the spec here. It's a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 engine with 10 speed automatic. We call it EcoBoost in terms of force language. The engine has 330 horsepower and 415 pound foot of torque. So lots of power, lots of torque. Something that I wish Toyota would keep in mind because I speculate that the new Forerunner to be out in about a year and a half will migrate to a 2.4 liter uh, turbocharged engine in a four cylinder format. And it's competition like the Bronco or the Jeep all have V6 engines. So I really hope that they will keep the V6, but we'll have to find out a little bit later on. Back to the Bronco. 
Zero to 60 is actually pretty fast, about six and a half seconds, which is more than enough for off-roader. You don't expect a car like this to do so well in terms of zero to 60, but this thing is actually pretty fast, and you step on the gas, it takes off. Uh, so we'll go for a full drive review later on. Let's get back into the interior of the Bronco, which is pretty uh, interesting to see. So one of the interesting things about the uh, Bronco's interior is that it's all designed for off-road ability, which means that things like doors and these panels are all uh, able to come off. So obviously taking this off is not so much work, taking doors off is a lot more work, but in order to have that capability, a lot of the buttons and switches had to move around. So for example, just like in the Jeep, the power window switches are not on the door, it's on the center console, so you find the power window here. And even the, the actual mirror adjustment is on the center console. Uh, but it's a little bit awkward because the mirror adjustment is actually upside down. So when you think that uh, you can adjust upward, it's actually moving downwards and so forth. But those are minor things. You get uh, the modes here, so you can change different kind of uh, driving modes. Uh, thankfully, we still get lots of buttons and switches. Something that's important if you're off-roading, you don't want to fiddle with um, infotainment system. So I'm glad they kept everything traditional that way. Uh, big, grippy um, shifter for the transmission and lots of places to hold on when you're going off-roading again. Very nice grip. Uh, we don't get a grip here because of the um, A-pillar combination with the airbag, but there's lots of place to hold on everywhere else. There's also a button here for the different types of the uh, drivetrain, uh, and then we even get a, a charging port in the front, both USB-A and USB-C. So lots of cool features. Once again, this car is probably most enjoyable if you take the panels off, Maybe don't bother with the doors, uh, but if all the panel comes off, it's just like a convertible. And that's one of the interesting things about Bronco and Jeep type models is that it's literally um, a convertible. Now, also in terms of the technology side, uh, Ford shares most of its system with uh, a number of different models. So this is a very familiar, uh, but it's got a full CarPlay um, and all of the different features are quite easy to use. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both wireless, but most of all, I think the actual system for the Ford is quite good. I like it better than the General Motors one, and even the new uh, version from Toyota and Lexus are not as friendly to use as this one. So I think Ford actually have a pretty good infotainment software, and the controls are easy to use. The audio system is not so bad. Uh, also, this one has an upgraded uh, BO system, so the music is very clear. Uh, what else can I tell you? We still get a uh, sort of a semi-digital instrumentation in the front uh, cluster here. So it's not fully digital, which I actually prefer because you get a combination of the speedometer, which is a uh, normal uh, gauge, combined with a digital instrumentation that gives you all the information you need. So um, I actually like that combination. Instead of a fully digital format, it gives you a bit of a traditional feel and look. And even these uh, little uh, vent the little ha handle here is rubberized and it's kind of grippy. So lots of details have been taken into account and uh, it's one of the best interior design I've seen. It's way better than the Jeep. The Jeep Wrangler is now kind of outdated. It's still a um, pretty good off-roader, but in terms of technology features and interior design, the Bronco definitely trumpets the uh, Jeep. In fact, even if you compare it to the 4Runner, which is not a direct competitor, but that's the closest thing we have from Toyota in terms of an off-road SUV, this thing is much more uh, user-friendly, uh, more cool looking, and uh, overall technology integration is way better in this Bronco. So the interior is good. Uh, one thing I didn't like though is that the seats are not as um, supportive as you think. So when you're going off-roading a bit, you tend to sway a lot, and especially between the headrest and then this part here, there's a bit of a, a gap because it kind of goes down this way and up again. So I found that the head moves around a lot when you're going over bumpy roads. But anyway, the rear seats are actually okay. This one is two-door version, which isn't the one I recommend just because I think four-door is so much more uh, convenient, but it has surprising good amount of space in the rear. And so even though it's a bit hard to get in and out, uh, if you have to use the two-door to carry passengers, no major issues in the back. Uh, the trunk space is a little bit small, but that's expected in a short wheelbase, a short body car like this. Uh, otherwise, um, I really like the interior. There's also overhead console here with auxiliary buttons you can actually add later on. 
Uh, so lots of customization possible with the Bronco. Now let's take it for a spin in terms of the driving side and let me tell you a little bit more about how this thing feels on the road. Okay, so let's take the Ford Bronco wild track for a, a little ride here. And um, it's interesting because with this one, you get a 35 inch uh, tire combination, which is not something that most manufacturers offer, although Jeep does offer it now. Um, but you definitely couldn't get that in previous years with the Wrangler. So uh, this is amazing to be able to get that straight from the manufacturer. And in a place like this where I have a little bit of a gravel road, these uh, large, softer um, off-road tires are absolutely amazing because it gives you the comfort and gives you uh, isolation from the road. On the other hand, once you take it out on the road, especially when you get to higher speeds like on the highway, then um, it's not as good. It just isn't as stable with these large uh, off-road tires. And so you get to a little bit of a, a bumpy situation and it doesn't feel as stable as uh, normal SUV. So you kind of have to decide if you really want to take this thing uh, on uh, off-road course and therefore you're willing to compromise normal street performance or uh, you want to use this mostly for city driving uh, or in-town driving in which case I wouldn't recommend the large 35 combination I would stick with the normal uh, tires and wheels so those are some things to keep in mind other things to keep in mind is that it's obviously not a quiet SUV so if you're uh, used to having a crossover or a quieter large SUV and you suddenly have a desire to buy something like this, once again, you have to keep in mind that this is a compromise in terms of comfort and NVH, which is noise, vibrations, and harshness. And if you're the type of person who uh, really want the most uh, amount of comfort or refinement, this is not um, SUV or truck for you. Um, but if you want something that can go anywhere and has an amazing amount of capability while retaining most of the normal driving uh, comfort uh, for most people, then this is probably the right vehicle for you. Uh, now, it is a shorter wheelbase model because this is a two-door coupe, so it does get bumpy even at lower speed. But for the most part, it's under control. And the suspension, of course, is very capable of handling some very difficult terrain. So um, it's not the best uh, maybe city car or a highway car. It's just amazing uh, in terms of driving over any kind of a rough terrain uh, or off-road course. Now in terms of the engine, I love this engine. Even though a lot of people complain the turbocharged engine is not the best for off-road course, well that isn't true anymore because uh, with this 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, you get immediate power and torque with no hesitation whatsoever. There's no turbo lag, and therefore when you step on the gas, there's a right amount of torque uh, right off the bat, and the torque curve stays very flat. And so you don't have to worry about suddenly getting a boost of uh, uh, energy and then losing a bit of a control. That's not the case. It's a very smooth, refined, powertrain that has a really good uh, calibration in terms of power, torque, and RPM. So even if you're taking this off-road uh, over different kind of terrain, you can modulate the accelerator and you can actually control the speed quite well. It has all of the uh, curl control type features as well. So whether you're going up and down in very difficult terrain or going down a steep slope, you can control the speed of the uh, vehicle with, with ease. Um, but back to the engine, I actually think this is one of the best engines out there. It's smooth and absolutely refined, even though this is an off-road vehicle. And even though there has been some uh, troubling issues in the past with uh, some of the Ford uh, EcoBoost engines, that's more or less all gone now. And it's been quite reliable over the last uh, few years. So I wouldn't worry about reliability too much. It's proven to be pretty good. And as I mentioned earlier, the overall quality of the body and the alignment and panel fit has been good. I don't hear any kind of rattles and squeak in this vehicle other than that uh, you can feel and hear the suspension moving up and down once again because this is a, a very much an off-road uh, oriented vehicle. So overall, what can I say about the Ford Bronco Wild Track in terms of driving? I think it's a very much a truck feel. Um, but the engine is wonderful, very refined, lots of power and lots of torque. Uh, and then the suspension is very forgiving if going over a rough road, uh, but not the best suspension and not the best combination of tires and wheels 
for uh, highway driving or a busy city driving just because it gets pretty bumpy and therefore it's not as comfortable. So only you can decide what's the right combination of the Ford Bronco for you. But thankfully, Ford has many different uh, uh, combination of options and features in terms of engine, powertrain, and uh, also tire combination. So you can choose the exact model you want. So in conclusion, I've been, generally speaking, pretty impressed with the Ford Bronco uh, because of the, uh, the fit and finish and the quality of the panels. And also it's really fun vehicle to drive. It gets lots of attention. It has amazing resale value. So you don't have to worry about losing any money on this thing. If anything, it keeps appreciating. So it's a good investment that way. Uh, only if you can find one because it's so difficult to get a uh, hold of the Ford Bronco. I almost uh, came very close to buying one because I had a deposit and my name did come up but I chose not to buy it for now. But perhaps a little bit down the road I might change my mind and buy the Bronco. We'll see how that goes based on whether or not Foreigner, in terms of next generation Foreigner, will be a good one to buy. If I'm not happy with that one, maybe I'll buy the Ford Bronco. Anyhow, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed my walk around review. There's uh, more to come your way. If you're able to make some comments, give me the thumbs up and then subscribe. That would be truly, truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.